in education, you hear people say, we will have technology anytime, any place, anywhere. But to many educators, that means except in the classroom. We work with children who have grown up digitally. To them, technology is a part of the natural world. But we have teachers who have no understanding of the way in which technology can be used in the classroom because they have no technology. They have no use of it. There's very little time to practice, think about, incorporate technology as learning. And most of all, there is no way in which they can transform education to the education they know now as to what it was when they went through school. So many teachers, many educators, many administrators are holding on to ideational scaffolding that was of the last century. This is the 21st century. The world has changed. Children live in a world of media. It speaks to them from everywhere. But when they go into a classroom, many times there's just chalk and talk and they're bored. It isn't because the teachers are doing anything differently than when you went to school. It is because the world has changed. The media speaks to children. But there is something that media does for children that's even better. It allows them to be creators, producers. It allows them to think about things and analyze. It allows them to go on field trips with people like Bob Ballard and to places they may never go. It allows them to talk to astronauts. For teachers, the same thing happens. Instead of being relegated to professional development by one person in a system who may or may not know everything there is about science. There are people from NASA. There are people from National Geographic. There are resources from many different organizations. And there are even teacher organizations that call content and create projects like the MCI Marco Polo to allow them a path, a guide, a silk road, a way to think about using technology as media. So how do we change teaching and learning? And how do we create the possibility that instead of just pioneers, we engage all teachers? We start with engaged learning. One of the things we must do to teach teachers is to allow them to explore the ways in which they can use technology to create a learning landscape. Now, what is a learning landscape? It's the way in which they use technology to invite children to learn, to understand, to explore, and it includes many different types of technology. It's not just the internet. It's bringing together, converging, creating many ideas that allow children to learn. But a teacher must do this first. A teacher must learn how to create pedagogy using resources that are available to him or her in their own learning landscape, in their own geographical setting, in their own style of teaching and learning. So teachers need access, first of all, they need also support to learn the technology. And learning the technology is not learning the four languages that I learned but didn't use. Learning the technology is not learning a piece of software, and sometimes we think so. It's taking the teacher, it's taking the educator, it's taking the administrator to the point where they understand what engaged learning is. You may walk into a classroom where wonderful things are going on and not be aware of the fact that it requires structure. Because you need to know, first of all, how does it work? It needs to have a kind of seamless interface. So how does it work and how do we use this and what are we doing today? So the construction of the learning landscape creates the product, the project, the objectives, and the assessment. A lot of people think when children are using technology, they're playing. It seems like play because it's joyous learning. It seems like play because they're not looking at you. It seems like play because the teacher may be a guide on the side or a person sitting engaged in working with a group. That's different for a lot of us. It looks like the teacher's not working. When you first start working like that, it's very hard working because you have to learn new ways of controlling, allowing, sharing, and also you must learn to be a learner. That's hard for some of us. But transformational learning will change the world in such a way that we can do many different things that teaching and learning have never done. One of them being that we'll create paths to lifelong learning. In the learning landscape, one of the things that happens is people say, well, when is this technology going to get to the point where it's all at one place? It never will be. We who change shoes, 
buy new cars, buy new appliances, sometimes think that the things that we use in education have to last 10 years. I want you to think about this scenario. Children in my classroom were working with NASA. There was a special project in which they were able to evaluate, look at, think about the Horsehead Nebula. Now what is that? It's astronomy. It's wonderful things. There's a website called Windows to the Universe where you can look at that now. Or you can actually help the scientists look using the Hubble Space Telescope. We don't have that in the classroom. There's a very difficult way of teaching astronomy. But with the internet, the children can use that and perhaps draw in the art from all of the cultures that have preceded us to see the way in which people have looked at the sky. But the Horsehead Nebula was on Time Magazine. My children saw the Horsehead Nebula six months before most people in the world got to see it. Education is empowerment. Education is knowing where Alexander the Great really went. Not just thinking of him in a paragraph, but being able to explore his footprints in India, in Greece, and as he went all through the Asian areas, and knowing what the cities were. I was lucky enough to be on a Fulbright, and I have a coin from where Alexander the Great went. I collected it in Kashmir, but most of our children can only do that exploring using the Internet as a resource. The great thing about that is they don't stop when we tell them. They stop when they've got their fill of it. And maybe one of the things that we do is to change learning into seeing information and changing it into knowledge that becomes personalized. Professional development is something that can be totally changed and transformed. I'm talking to you in ways that we can train teachers. Instead of being just the teacher in a place where there are no experts, we can reach to the Louvre. We can go to Egypt. We can go inside the pyramids. We can create projects that allow children to decide what would happen. I want you to think about the World Heritage Sites. You can't take the children around the world in reality, but you could with ubiquitous computing. And what is that? That's any time, any place, anywhere. We can use wireless objects. We can use little handhelds. And children can use cameras, take notes, type their little information in. What if we connected World Heritage Sites and let children from another country bring their idea of what the treasures are of a place that we've already certified as World Heritage? Or what if children are using global ways to think about the environment? We work sometimes in very specialized ways. Teachers get to go many places that children can't. So if you were going to go into a rainforest, or if you were going into the jungles of Peru, how would the children be able to participate? Well, we have guides who do that. We have people who have created information ways in which children can make decisions, ask questions, and begin to explore not just learning, but careers. That's the new facet that happens. And with ubiquitous computing, as they think, analyze, process, and create ideas, sometimes you get products you never asked for. I did a project called Chesapeake Bay, and it's all about uh, crabs and the way in which we use the environment, and I had visitors to my classroom. So we showed them our maps, we showed them our resources, we talked about seining and measuring time and tides, but the children did something I'd never seen before. They pulled out journals, they pulled out books, and this was before Oprah. They had actually enjoyed learning in such a way that they created poems, books, and stories, and they gave them to the visitors. So one of the things that technology allows us to do is to know that we can give away that information, you know, the information that we turn into knowledge, and that learning is a gift to be shared in many ways, and particularly in global ways. I'm able to speak to you from across a digital divide, but the digital divide that I'm speaking to you from is from a classroom versus places where there are lots of technology. There are many people in global situations where I go who have little or nothing. But weightless goods are the most important things that pass across these technologies that we share. The way to cure diseases, to test water, to understand, to take the knowledge and share it in many different ways is really important. When we talk about digital divide, we must also think about the content. Is the content reflective 
of the way the world is. Sometimes we give children universal knowledge, which actually means we haven't given them anything at all. Do you know who Dorothy Coleman is? You probably know who Amelia Earhart was, but Dorothy Coleman was the first black flyer, and she actually had a license and barnstormed all over the United States. Sometimes children have to see it to be it. When I taught a special project from the Smithsonian called Seeds of Change, some of my Hispanic children learned for the very first time of the majesty, of the culture, of the wonderful things that existed in pre-Columbian era. They knew that there was something, but they weren't able to define the cultures. So by using technology, we brought two old worlds together, not a new world. There was not a new world. Now think about it. There were some kinds of developments that have to do with metallurgy. They were in Africa. They were in Japan. There were cultures that discovered long before Arthur and his knights how to create technology, which at that time was metal. And people went to the libraries of Alexandria. They went to learn where the ideas were. So in creating our content to share what's going to be on the Internet, we must also use every kind of tool, every kind of technology, GIS kinds of things, but include the whole world in our learning. We can't just have one view. How exciting it would be to use one topic and to allow children from all over the world, as in Global School Net, to share their learnings. What a small world it will be. And kids with the tiniest of fingers can reach out to the world using technology as a tool and change the world for the better. In using technology, we need to develop stakeholders. The community needs to understand what the technology is. And so one of the things that we can do as educators, as administrators, as community people, is to explore the technology in new ways. You've seen the book fair. What about a technology fair? What about a technology roundtable that brings people together to think about, to share, to see what the technology is in the community and what the new ways are of sharing technology? And then with parents, in schools, perhaps we use technology to contact them. One of the things that happened to me was that a student in my classroom won the first computer I ever had. But do the teachers have the technology? Does the school have sufficient technology to deploy, to share, to do the wonderful things we're talking about? Sometimes a lab is a pencil down the hall, and it's a little difficult to use because the time constraints make it difficult. We say in America, that there are 95% of schools wired, but wired to what? And how many classrooms actually have technology? Have parents done an audit to see what there is and what might be needed? And do teachers have the tools to take home? There's very little time in the school day all over the world as I work with teachers. The time that they have in the classroom is precious. So do they have the tools to explore, to think about, to create in ways which make it possible for them to understand it in a ubiquitous way. And then the third thing is we must remember new technologies. While we're thinking about technology as the Internet, while we're looking at distance kinds of education, there are new things coming down the pike. There's a project called the Virtual Cave. I don't know if you've ever been in one, but it's fantastic. We don't want to think backwards. We want to think forward. The Virtual Cave, you stand inside. It's an environment, and you change it. Perhaps one day one of you will take that virtual environment and bring the Elgin marbles back to Greece, or create a trek down the Silk Road that will allow children to explore the three-dimensional parts of what it is that they are seeing. The virtual cave can also be an environment in which we explore the human body. And then there's the Immersa Desk. Teaching weather can be one of the most boring things without technology that you can think of. But the Immersa Desk, you can put your head down and see the physical part of the country that you're looking at and see the vectors and the systems as they pass. We may not get to that immediately, but we need to think about that. In the meantime, children will gleefully find the hottest and the coldest part of a playground, look at weather systems, collect information from parents and people who know what the history was of the weather in their area. 
and perhaps connect with a classroom that's experiencing some type of weather that they can share. Technology brings a face to communication. We have done some types of video conferencing. Do you know the iGrid? I sat in Access Center in Washington, D.C., and I saw faces from all around the world. We could see each other in real time, but that's next generation Internet. Remember, as we work in the new technology, we must also look forward. We must also think of new applications. Perhaps the children we're teaching now will think of the new applications because it's not just PowerPoint. It's using PowerPoint, Hyper Studio. It's learning to use to nuance the technology, to push it to the point where the technology is invisible and but a tool.